Good evening, everyone. My name is Henry Gamble, and we're bringing you the Simpler Options free video today. And I'm recapping a couple of positions that essentially I'd given analysis from during some of the previous weeks and wanted to update some of these because obviously the squeeze is not the end all be all indicator. It's an excellent signal for identifying moves that are about to happen or essentially saying that a market is about to have a move. The direction of that is not always perfect. Now I do like to trade it with the trend and today we're talking about that here in XLU. So when you begin the discussion, it's worth pointing out that off the weekly chart, yes, this was a bit extended because from our previous major swing high to swing low, you can see how it had almost come up into that 4701 level. However, whenever we have a squeeze in play, especially off the weekly charts, these can be strong moves, and this is what we want to try to participate in the continuation of. I also like to see that it can continue to close above the 10 moving average off the weekly chart. That's just a good support level to hold. So, weekly a little extended, holding support, but bullish. Now we drop it back down into the daily chart where we had several different extensions we were looking for here. And one of the things that I find most helpful is just being able to remove your studies for a moment and looking at the similarity or symmetry of these swings. So anytime you're looking at symmetry, all you're saying is, do these previous declines have any type of relationship into the existing decline? When the decline that you're trading starts to have a bigger correction than what you've seen previously, that's a break in symmetry, and that is something where you really have to start considering shifting the trend in that. Now you may ask, well, what about these declines? Because obviously this price decline was very sizable, and if you ran a similar move from here, well, then that would take you way down into much lower prices. Well, from that perspective, then it may still have support, but for your trading setups, try to define them against your most recent swing low. So that's to say that yes, there will be symmetry below this, but relative to what we're currently trading, we need to see it stay above here. So that's the way I use symmetry with my analysis. In this case, you can see that um, we're coming right down into some of that here. That is also a coincidence with the Voodoo Line study set that is also back down at these prices. But that's what I've got to see hold if I'm going to continue holding XLU. As far as directional calls are concerned, you can also use two closes below the 21 EMA to give you a heads up on the shift of that trend, and we've started to see that. So I am still in the trade, but if we start getting much below those previous swing lows or closing below that 21 EMA, we'll have to revisit it. Now the ticker that I also broke down, so I took some XLU and then I also took a position here in Dominion when we got our buy signal here off the daily chart. I preferred looking at actually taking the position in Dominion as opposed to a few of the others because we had not yet made our weekly extensions. That chart still looks perfectly fine, still holding the 10 off of the weekly chart but the daily had a rough move today. So similar to these others, you want to look at the previous declines, relate them into where we're currently trading. Now this chart didn't have quite as much symmetry for me, so I'm having to use it just a little bit more in relation to the 21 EMA and those previous lows, but I am still holding out for that sector. If the market starts to break down, I will have to take a little bit more decisive action, or I will have to look at putting on bearish things and something, and in this case Chevron came up. Now it's not part of the ETF that I'm focused on, but I did want to share some ideas around expiration and some various ways you can look to trade this. So when I look at this chart to begin with, you can see that obviously we've had a very healthy flush over the past several days in relation to what's going on with oil. Today we were down another one and a half percent and the first thought you might have, or at least the way that I usually tend to think about these things, is if we've had a hard flush and the implied volatility has spiked up, the best way you can take advantage of that is by selling a put option. Now selling a put in this case is extremely risky because how obviously bearish this trend has, be, has been. But if you want to try and capitalize on this and still say, okay, what if this does end up pending, pinning or hovering around 100 on the day of expiration? Well, the best place to go to play that would be the sale of the $100 puts. If you take a look at this in relation to the open interest and you look at this and say, wow, you know, it has 8,000 open contracts in relation to its neighboring strikes, which are much smaller. So the idea is whoever sold these has a vested interest in seeing them expire worthless. Well, I'm not brave enough to step in here and want to just sell like the $100 put spread or something like that. So just flip your thinking and say, okay, if I really want to try to take advantage of the $100 put expiring worthless and selling that put option, why not look at something like a vertical? 
where you are buying the 103 put, selling the 100, and when you set up a debit spread like that, if it pins at 100, that's great. You'll make the max profit. If it continues to decline and the pinning idea doesn't work out at all and it just keeps selling off, well then that still offers a great risk reward ratio. So if we came in and we looked at buying the vertical, here again we're using the $100 as our short strike because there's that large amount of open interest there. We're buying the 103 and that gives us a debit of about $1.60. So you're getting close to a one-to-one -one risk reward ratio. You're trying to find something where the open interest can allow you to sell some premium against a strike and I think that's a great way to do it. So with something like this you buy that put debit spread. Let's just say you get it for $1.50. That's going to set your break-even price at $102.50. $101.50 because you're paying a dollar fifty for it. I just like to point out, think about your strike that you're buying. Think about what you're paying for the spread. That will give you your break-even price and allow you to think about it from a more objective point of view. And hopefully that will help you guys with your expiration trading. So that's what I'll be focused on for this week. I also wanted to point out one other thing for those of you that are familiar with Bruce. He does have class that he's going to be teaching this Wednesday. This class is going to be focused a little bit more on strategies that you can set and forget. So a lot of the stuff that he does includes modifications, rolling orders, things of that nature. This will take the opposing side of that and just focus on here's your entry, here's your target, you know, risk is defined by the spread you're taking, and Bruce has been very good about explaining those trades. So if you guys have enjoyed learning from him, that next class is this Wednesday, December 17th, and I hope to see you there.